this has been insane. Good evening to you. Welcome to the Lord's house. You know, God's so good to us, isn't he? His blessings, amen, beyond measure. You know, if you start writing a book about how good God is, oh, what the volumes you will have. And it's truly an amazing thing. You know, the Bible talks about the sky, you know, could contain all. God has accomplished and done. It's truly such a, such a factor to that. Uh, and still yet, he knows the finite details of me. He knows me in my deepest, darkest part, and still yet he loves me so. And the more I ponder that and think on that, the more I stand at awe and say, thank you, Lord, how good you are to me. You see, we know what's on the surface of each other, what we show each other, amen? But, Miss Linda, what God knows are those things that we never show anybody. And in spite of all that, he still loves us, how deep and how grand and glorious it is. What a great God we serve, amen? amen. It's good to have our brother back with us tonight safely. Uh, I guess they chewed up some highway today, amen? <laughs> Making it back in here tonight. It's good to have Brother John back. Thank you, Brother Mike, for filling in. I Amen. appreciate that. I really do. And I guess if anybody is to be blamed for this morning, Miss uh, Sister Owens, that's put that on me. Amen. I'm not throwing nobody else under the bus. Uh, I've had the wheels of the bus roll over me so many times. I, I know just from where to lay. Amen. So uh, throw it on me. We'll just let that be what it is. We're, we're glad, you know, that God gives us such an opportunity. And, and here's one thing I always tend to remember about service. You know, if we were so polished and everything was so do 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 smooth and none of that problems and everything like that, we'd miss so much stuff. Say amen right there. Sometimes it's through the adverse actions and things that tend to happen. Those things, Brother Carl, that get turned upside down that can bring so much more joy. And it really does. So I try not to have it so scripted, if you will. I've been in services where everything's got to be this time and this has to happen that and that has to happen that do you understand life ain't that way how many of y'all have ever had a curveball thrown at you in life <laughs> had it all planned out mapped out i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do this. did you ever read in the book of james those that said i'm gonna go and buy and get gain and do as i've done today and da 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 you know what god said you should say, Lord willing, Lord willing. God has a way of throwing curveballs. 
and putting speed bumps out there to remind us of, whoa, hold on there, sucker. It's time to take a little notice right here. Amen. Amen. And he does this stuff to get our attention to wake us up to reality. Why are we here? What is our real purpose in life? Why did God create us so? Is this for me to live Shane Scott's life? To get all I can get out of this world and then be what I am? Is there a bigger picture at play here? Is there a bigger purpose? And when we start to embrace why we're truly here, you really see how small we are and how big God truly is. It truly amazes me, Brother Carl, that he even includes me into the picture, but he does. What a great God we serve. Psalms 119, verse 97 says, Oh, how, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. You do yourself some good to think on the word of God. Spend some time in it. Be amazed at what it will do to so many aspects of your life. Think on these things. How much time do I waste in other things? And not really thinking about the real things I ought to think about, such as the Word of God. It makes a difference. This week I had one of those little curveballs get thrown to me, a little speed bump, if you will. I've been going pretty much with my hair on fire, and some of y'all know this. But lo and behold, I wished he would have done it a different way, though. I'm just going to tell you straight, I wished he would have done it a different way. I got food poisoning on Thursday. Anybody ever had food poison? Amen. I've had it a few times, and it's probably the worst I ever had it. <laughs> had it pretty bad. But anyhow, I had food poisoning, and you know, like I said, Thursday's my day off. <laughs> Not really. But anyhow, God says, guess what? You're going to lay flat on your back on Friday. Now think about that. And I wonder why, Brother Ed, why would God put me flat on my back on a Friday? Because he knew Monday was coming. Y'all with me tonight? Because he knew Monday was coming. Now, in case y'all don't know, in the morning I'm going to hit the road. I'm not leaving for good. So either if you're going to celebrate, get that out of your head. Or if you're depressed, get over that too. I'm coming back. By the grace of God, I'll be back. But I'm leaving Monday morning to go to Kansas. And it's so easy for us to get so wrapped up with the day-to-day. -day, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. God puts us flat of our back for a reason and a purpose. Because Monday is coming. Y'all listening tonight? So should I get upset because God put me on my back on Thursday and Friday? Or should I understand that God cares be, for me beyond all measure? And he's going to do right by me in all things. So the next time you're going through something like food poisoning, just realize you got a Monday coming. And he's preparing you for your Monday. There's a bigger picture. He knows my ups and my downs, my ins and my outs. He knows all things about me, Miss Doris. And he wants my best. And so he does these things preparing me for what's coming next. Amen. How many of us have been praying for a long time about my house in Kansas? Thank you. Our prayer is being answered, brothers and sisters. You would say, well, preacher, why didn't he sell it a year, two years ago? Was it time? Reason and purpose. We're not frivolously going through this. We're not carelessly going through this. And we're not doing it without a God that does not care. He cares beyond all measure. 
There's a reason and a purpose why we do what we do and how come. And the more and more that we embrace this and we understand this, the more we're enlightened and we're uplifted in the process. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them who are the called according to his purpose. It's all for our good. So should I fuss and gripe and complain? No. And I'm telling you, Thursday night, I was pretty bad. But as I look back and I know what's out in front, it reminds me, because if he had not put me on my back for Thursday and Friday, maybe I would not have taken on Monday like I ought to and need to. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to the throne, we thank you for the privilege. Help us, God us, direct us, both in the song service and the preaching tonight. Let all things be encouraging, uplifting, and enlightening. Remind us, dear Lord, that there's a bigger picture at play, and there's things that we do not see and we do not know. But, Lord, you do, and you're capable to go above and beyond anything we say, think, or do. But, Lord, help us and encourage us and guide us through the process. That, Lord, on the other side, we'll smile and say, thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. Lead, guide, and direct in Christ's name. Amen, Brother John. Amen. Good afternoon. I told him, I said, I'll get up here probably and go to sleep while you're preaching. So if you see me fall out over there, don't worry about it. But Miss Amy, I'm not going to ask you what you cook to give him food for. So that may be another story, right? <laughs> you know, it may have been on purpose. We don't know that. I'm, I'm hoping not I'm anyhow. <laughs> and Miss Owens. He can tell you all day long that that was his fault, and you know better than that because I'm the one that fills this out and gives it to Miss Wanda. I forgot to put it on there, and Miss Wanda didn't get it on there because she didn't know. She didn't run the bus over me, brother. That's, uh, you know, that's all right, but I, I take blame where it goes at, you know that. But it was uh, very wonderful this morning to be able to be in church. Amen. Hey. Y'all don't know it, but we was riding, as Key said, 95 miles. I don't know if I can say that over there or not. He may get in trouble. <laughs> Ninety-five miles an hour coming back, coming back from there, and I flipped it on. And you know, there's one thing about that: when you're in the car doing ninety-five miles an hour, and you got a preacher preaching, the person that's next to you can't go nowhere. <laughs> they just have to sit there and listen to it. So he 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 watched it real real good. Well, he watched it real good, and, and was receptive over too. He loves our pastor, and he loves these kids back here too because they work for him, yeah. and uh, he's growing a lot and. I told Will, I said, you know, when he worked with the asphalt company, I said, you've got a big job. I said, because you've got to witness to those people. And let me tell you something, those boys do, both of them. They, they do that, and thank God for that. And Brother Mike, love you to death, man. Thank you so much for doing that. And he even got to see you in a place where he usually don't see you. By the way, he that does. made an impact too, Brother Mike. Yes, Let's sir. Just put that on the table too. Yes, sir. Amen. Sometimes you think... And church, y'all listen to me very carefully. I just talked yeah. with John about that very aspect. You don't know what your day-to-day -day living does and the volumes it speaks to them out there. They're taking notes. They're watching. Amen. Remember, they're going to be reading the Word. Just make sure they're reading the right Word. Amen. Mm -hmm. It makes all the difference in the world. But I just want to say thank you, Ms. Owens, for doing that this morning. He covered for me. I've seen him. <laughs> He, he, it'll cost me in the long run, but he took care. If y'all would stand with me, please. Amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see, t'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did 
that grace appear, the hour I first believe. When we Shining as the sun, we know less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, 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 praise God. Amen. Even though they say this is a kid's song that we usually sing at vacation Bible school and we sing it at different times and in classrooms. I'm going to tell you all a little story about this song this, this past week. I was telling the pastor, y'all think that we just take and pick out the songs that we do. I don't pick those songs out, okay? What he preaches, he preaches. I don't know what his sermon, now every once in a while he'll give me a hint. And, and that's fine. And, but I don't match songs what he preaches. But as I was praying about this, this song kept coming up for two weeks. And you remember what I told you all about when I didn't sing that song? And I kept thinking, that's a kid's song. I'm not going to. And it kept everywhere I'd go. I got to where I was hearing this song. I was like, you know what? You've got to do that song because God ain't going to let it get off the heart, but it's Jesus loves me. So we're going to do Jesus loves me. Amen. Here you go, God. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones do. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sins. Let his little children in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. Thou hast bled and died for me, I will henceforth live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. Hey. You may be seated. I'm going to show you here in a few minutes why. <laughs> when you said it, if we were talking about it, I know exactly why. You're about ready to find out. <laughs> Charla asked me this morning, she said she's got a She's got a song of testimony she'd like to share with the church tonight, something God kind of put on her heart. So, Charlotte, come on up here. If you'd like to share it with us. And I said, sure. I said, uh, you know, like y'all know this morning, we were a little out of pocket a little bit. You know, it's, like I said, you know, we're, you, there's a natural order of things that we do. You know, Brother John, he, he's right. He does take care of everything and takes a lot of stuff off of me and helps me in a lot of different ways. 
And when you're missing one piece of the puzzle, it makes a big difference. I do greatly appreciate Brother Mike stepping up and doing what he did and helping out and everything. Uh, but uh, I don't mind Brother Mike taking that. I miss Miss Owen. She didn't think nothing bad about that. I still brought her on up here because your song was very needful to me this morning. Something I needed. And what you played meant and spoke to my heart a lot. You're talking about listening to what God put on your heart, Brother John, about why that song. And we're going to get why he wanted us to sing Jesus Loves Us. You're going to see in the message tonight why that's so poignant on target to what God wants. And then you coming up here tonight, Charlotte, there's a reason for this too. I don't mess with what God does because I understand there's a bigger picture at play that a lot of times we don't get all the little details about. All we do is walk in faith and trust God in the process. So, Charlotte, go ahead and share with the sister. Well, um most of you know that I've been coming for a while. I've been coming here since about February. And I'm not a member here, but my relationship with the Lord makes us all family. Amen. Um, Bless her, Lord. I was hoping I wouldn't do that. Um, when I came, I came with a Goliath-sized trial, and I'm not going to say it's over, but God sent me here at the right place, at the right time, with the right people. Amen. Amen. And... There have been many times in my life when I have been faced with difficult things. And um, just the other day, I needed some time to myself, so I took a day and I went shopping. And I was looking for, I found me a sweater, and I found this um, necklace that says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And it's kind of strange because that's one, one message that I needed to hear at the moment from the day. And also because I have been reading in my Bible uh, since the pandemic. I started, I was going to read in, Mar in um, the Bible through. I started in March, right, when the pandemic hit. So I'm going to read my Bible through this year. Well, I got, with this trial that's going on, I got stuck in Jeremiah. And for some reason, Jeremiah this time was just as dry as it could be. I couldn't get anything out of it. I mean, it took me four ever to get through it didn't get anything out of it well God used that dry book of the Bible to bring me a verse Jeremiah 31 3 that I needed Amen. so Stick with the stuff, and God will use it, okay? That's now, normally when I do go through a trial, um, God, I'll be all upset, and I'm crying, upset, and I'll just start singing. And somewhere along the line, this is a little chorus, that I, a little medley that I put together that I sing. So I wanted to share it with you because that's usually what I do in order to lift my heart uh, when it's heavy, and it focuses on um, God and who he is. Uh, one of the verses in it is in Spanish, and I'm leaving it there on purpose because the message of God's love transcends all languages, okay? If you know Spanish, great. If you don't, God knows, and the message is the same. It ends with a song that you're familiar with, and I'll let you sing it with me if you'd like at the end. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song. <laughs> to Jesus, in moments like these,
I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. And I to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, Amen. in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear, Te amo Dios, Levanto mi voz, lorarte a ti, es mi gozo Dios, regocíjate en mi canto, se yo sonido feliz para ti. Jesus, because he first loved me. I love him, he first loved me. And y'all keep Charlie in your prayers. She's about ready to go into a new chapter of her life. And it's always scary in going into the realm of the unknown. And it's difficult. It's harsh. A lot of people got a lot of different ideas and a lot of different thoughts about what she should and should not do. But as I've instructed Charla, just walk the path that God has you on. Go with the Lord in the process. I found a lot of people that we would call good people. We would talk about trusting God and loving the Lord and everything. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't necessarily match up with the Word of God as much as they might think they do. I would to God it wasn't that way, but it's the truth. A lot of people look uh, a lot based upon law and not love. Some people, you've heard me say for quite a while now, and you're going to hear me say a lot more. You see, what was the Sadducees and the Pharisees' big issue? Legal. It's all about law. They didn't wash their hands. They ate this kind of meat. They did this. They did that. What was Jesus' response? You always come back to the heart. Always. And so as you walk your journey, just make sure you're walking with God. Amen. You know, we all have to make that decision. But I hope tonight's message, like I told Brother John, as you begin to pick that song out, I know the reasons why and why God wanted it tonight. Hebrews chapter number 12. You say, well, we were in chapter number 12 this morning. Different part. I gave you 14, 15, 16, and 17. What's that? Yes, I am. See, you coming back is really just, now i got to get back in the swing of things. Amen. Well, go ahead and turn your Bibles over there. As we're getting ready, Brother Tim, come on, we'll get ready to receive an offering tonight. Heaven help us. And I was about ready to leave Miss Owens out again. Sister, just tar and feather me and get it over with. Run me out of town on a wheel. Amen. Sure enough. Anyhow, but we're going to go put Bibles together this week and thank God for that opportunity.
then we got Mama's Day coming up in a couple weeks afterwards, and we're looking forward to that. And, of course, uh, we got a uh, Women's Day out for you ladies uh, uh, going out to dinner that day. And so we got that working and everything. And, and so uh, next Sunday uh, we'll be sure to give you all the details of the timing and all like that. And all you ladies are welcome. And, uh, and we want all you ladies to go. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times when we start thinking about women's uh, banquets and things like that, a lot of times you ladies, y'all fixing the food and doing all that's not much of a banquet. That's not really treating you all. And so the, we're, we're really thinking this year what we're going to do is we're going to send you out to a restaurant and let you all enjoy yourself uh, going out. And, and all God's people said, amen. amen. And so we're looking forward to that and doing that. But uh, Tuesday is uh, correlating scriptures, and so 9 o'clock be here, and then going over to the Bible barn over there and uh, looking forward to that. Brother Bill's going to be filling in for me Wednesday night, and thank you, Brother Bill, for that. And I know you all get a great blessing from Brother Bill Wednesday night, so be here and be a part of that. And uh, then, of course, uh, you pray for us as we travel. And uh, by the grace of God, uh, we'll be rolling in here along about Thursday night sometime. And uh, I'm going to say probably Friday I'll be finding a place just to find a shade tree to sleep. Amen. Y'all know how those fast trips can be. They can really suck the life out of you. Right, Brother John? Sure enough, but anyways, and then we'll get studied up and ready to go for Sunday, all right? But anyhow, thank God for every opportunity. Brother Tim, ask the blessing of the offering, my brother. It's a beautiful scene I just watched and everything. Uh, Anna, let me tell you, it's a good thing that you moved in on that seat with them. They need a little maturity uh, to kind of be with them. If you have ever seen those two ladies together, they're like two teenage girls anyhow. Uh, and all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Sure enough. I tell you, oh, you know what? You, you, you ladies just enjoy yourself. Just enjoy yourself. At, you know, listen. God knew what he was talking about when he talked about the need of the church. 
what we see, don't we understand how much we need each other, how much we thrive and strive in the presence of each other. The reason why a lot of people are hurting and struggling, they ain't got that. We need that. Church is more than somebody coming up and giving a message. If that's all it is, let's go home. The reason why you're here, Charlotte, because you needed us. And God brought you here. It's what God does. Miss Doris, you can testify. It wasn't good being at home away from everybody, was it? It's good to be here. It's good to be with the family. Amen. Brother John, welcome home, brother. You know? Like Ed told me, he said, we're back, we home. You are, Ed. You are home, brother. Means everything. As you're looking next to your sister there, Anna, they're very good sisters to have. Yeah, they've had a few curveballs dealt their way too. But they're still standing. That lady sitting right next to you, she got a couple kids in heaven. And I ain't ever seen a lady take it the way she did. Bless you, sister. But you know what? God puts other people in our lives, and we need those. We need each other. Don't ever think we can go it alone. Don't ever think that we don't need. We need each other. The value, the importance of it. Sean, glad to see you tonight, buddy. You need this church. And by the way, this church needs you. That might sound strange to you. Preacher, I haven't been here enough, and I haven't been. This church needs you, you, and you need this church. And the more you understand that, and the more we all understand that, the better off we all will be for it. Jesus loves me, huh? Little kitty song, Jesus loves me. Hebrews chapter 12. So they say. I got news for you, Brother John. Play it anytime you want to, brother. That's coming from a middle aged man, by the way. It don't get old with me. And I sung it a long time ago, and I still like to sing it today. All God's people said, Amen. Wherefore, wherefore, sing we ought so compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. <laughs> We're going to take a little time to go through this because I want it to really sink into you tonight. Cloud of witnesses, not just that camera right there, and we're glad to have y'all tuning in, but right here in this room, and by the way, what we take when we leave this house, how those people watch us and observe us too. Don't just be Christian on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night. Be Christian every day of the week. I had a guy tell me, preacher, I love you, man, but I sure wouldn't come up there because I know those people up there and the way they act. Now, it's not this church when I pastored years ago. But here, listen to me, church. We don't need to be those kind of people. Only Christian when we show up at the church house telling everybody how we love them, how we care for them, and then outside these doors at the grocery store, we don't even let on that, like, like they exist. I got news for you. I'm glad God don't act that way. I'm glad that God doesn't react and do like some so-called Christians do. People are watching. Eyes are upon us. Wherefore, he says, seeing we're also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, 
Let us then, because that's the factor, Brother John, let us lay aside every weight that in sin that so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that set it before us. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. You want to know why Jesus did what he did? It's in the next little phrase right here. Which is tonight's message title. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy. You know why he did what he did? For the joy. For the joy. Do you think it started off in the beginning that it was all good? Do you remember where Jesus found you? Do you remember where he got you? Do you really think that was a joy to him? Or is he talking about what you're going to become? For the joy. He's looking forward to what it can be. What it's going to be. Do you understand that? You see, I'm not doing it for the here and now. I'm doing it for the hereafter. The impact, the influence, the reward that God one day is going to pay accordingly. For the joy. For the joy. Let's read on. Who for the joy, he says, that was set before him, he endured the cross. <whistles> Despised the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He didn't get all the way to the throne of God without the enduring the cross. Despising the shame. He went through some things to get to the joy. Trials and tribulations. Struggles. Going through things. To develop us and grow us. Who for the joy. Then he tells us this, Brother Bill, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Consider, think about why he did what he did. It sounds like a contradiction. You mean to tell me it's joy to go to the cross? Joy to be despised? Joy for all the ridicule and the hatred? He wasn't looking at the here and now. He's looking after the hereafter. Remember that. I'd like to tell you I've always been the best shame, but I'd be lying to you to say that. Matter of fact, Brother Darrell, I still have issues that I have to work on daily. Still got things to go through, Miss Doris. Amen. But it's what God's doing in me, through me, and to me that brings him great joy at what Shane's going to become. Who for the joy? For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. Why? Because, Brother Jeff, you're going to find some strength right here, brother. When you start considering why Jesus went through what he went through and how he endured what he went through, you know what that does? That keeps you from quitting. That keeps you from throwing in the towel. That keeps you, that, that keeps you from sitting there saying, you know what? I'm done. I've had enough. Don't take it. I'm done. Consider him. Did he stop? Did he quit? Did he throw in the towel? Did he ever one time say, you know what? I'm going to pack it to those days in carpentry? Huh?
things we went that we went to God we hadn't done, but for the joy. That's a looking forward stuff. What you can turn into, Brother Mike, that's what really matters the most. So let's go back at some things that, number one, will hinder for the joy. Verse number one again, the Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Do you understand that those around you can be your worst enemies? Those around you can hinder the very process and progress that God wants to make with you. Amen? You know who can help you to bring you joy? And do you know who can actually hinder you and steal your joy? The exact same people and all God's people said, amen. You see, those that are around us, those watching us. You know, when I start thinking about people's standards. Now, I don't know about you, but I have come to the place in my life, I'm not so concerned about everybody else's standards. He just don't match up as a typical preacher and therefore... If you ever thought I was typical on anything, you got the wrong message. How many of y'all in here think that I'm typical? Exactly. I ain't typical nothing. By the way, I am half a century old. I ain't been typical for 50 years. I'm not going to be typical for the rest of whatever years I got out in front of me. <laughs> it ain't happening. Miss Amy, you need to work on him, fix him. Ask her. She'll tell you right now you're barking up the wrong tree. Amen. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. Why? You see, those same people that can give you joy can also steal your joy when you're focused on them. Those watching. Romans 14, verse 6 says this. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth the, uh, not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. Huh. Mean I'm not eating it for the Pharisees? Mean I'm not eating it for the Sadducees? You mean I'm eating it for God? <whistles> mean I'm not regarding the day? You know, I had a guy tell me before I came down here, he was so distraught that I didn't keep the Sabbath. So I asked him one day. When I saw him out there, he was sitting on a Saturday in his lawn chair reading his little Bible. And as I saw him there, I said, oh, hey, how you doing? You enjoying? He said, yeah, I'm enjoying myself. See, you reading your Bible? yeah. Keeping the Sabbath. Oh, okay. So then he kind of opened the door and he wanted to ask me why I don't keep the Sabbath. Hmm. I said, let me ask you a question, buddy. If you don't keep the Sabbath, does that mean that you'll die and go to hell? You know what he told me? He told me before he had a chance to think it through. I said, yeah. What, what? I, when he started to back pedal, Brother Tim, was when I said, I thought it was for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Whoa, 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 I, I, no, 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 no. And he started backpedaling. He started backpedaling. Look at the scriptures. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he does not regard it. He that eateth, he eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth, and giveth God thanks. For none of us live to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. 
I do what I do for God. God's my motivation. He's my reasoning. You see, I am compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, but my standard is so much higher when I look to God rather than look into man and his little marks. Y'all got me tonight? Y'all with me tonight? You see, that's so important because those very same people that you try to live up to are the very same people that will bring you down and steal your joy. You understand? We're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. In John 4, verse number 39, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testifieth, he told me all that ever I did. You know why he, all those people got saved? Not because this woman was a perfect woman, not that she did everything right. Matter of fact, you read that passage of scripture right there. How many husbands did this woman have and how many of them that she had had? And all of a sudden, in the end of that story, you found out the one that she's living with, she's not even married to. You know what? God still used her. God still used her and he saved a whole village because of her testimony. Y'all with me tonight? So the very same thing, or the very same people that you think will bring you joy, the very same people that can steal your joy when you're living for man. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, who for the joy, so I see here that those watching can hinder my joy. There's another two part there that can hinder my joy. It's in the same verse. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Do you realize weights that we put on ourselves? can take our joy in the scriptures many times you'll see when Jesus come up against issues that people had he a lot of time asked him this question brother Ed how is it written or how readest thou you know you'll find that a lot of people have a lot of different ideas about what this book actually does say amen matter of fact I just was early talking to uh uh, Charlotte about uh, she has to do about the pants and the dress and da da da. I hope you don't mind, Charlotte. As we kind of talk, and that's been a major issue with a lot of church people for a long time. Ladies, wear ladies' uh, clothing. I ain't got no problem with you wearing ladies' clothing, whatever that attire is. Guess what? If y'all came in here with a pair of pink, uh, whatever, I'm not putting those britches on, and I don't want y'all wearing my clothing. Amen. But why do I need to sit there and wrestle around with these issues that have driven wedges and have created weights upon ourselves for so long? Y'all with me tonight? How many of y'all like bacon? Get the hands up. You like bacon? Like it. Get it up. You realize some people would say, how dare you? That's unclean meat. Unclean meat. Unclean. Peter tried to pull that little line with the Lord. How many of y'all remember that? He tried to pull that little line with the Lord after he woke up from a dream and the Lord had some unclean meat on the skillet. You know what Jesus told, or what the Lord told to Peter? Don't you ever say anything I have prepared is unclean. You better lose that little attitude, buddy. You know why? Those are the weights that we put upon ourselves. You know what that will do? It will steal your joy. So those around us can give us joy, but they can take our joy too when we're looking to them. Those things that we bring into our lives, Julie, can give us joy. They can take our joy too. You say, how in the world can something I bring into my life give me joy and take my joy? Well, let me ask you a question. You know, Melissa, I don't mean to pick on you, honey, but I'm going to pick on you just a little bit. I see you're getting this green thumb deal. Man, you're really working into that yard and everything. Do you realize that can also consume you? It can bring you great joy, but it can consume you to the point you have to live up to if you make it that way. Y'all with me? Y'all understand? How many of y'all have ever seen that deal with the Christmas lights? 
Y'all seen them little deals, them little, them little stories they tell. Oh, last year we had lights on this side. Oh, we're going to have it all over. We all it. And they get so consumed with and so wrapped up with something that brought them great joy at one point in time. It's a have to. I've got to do this thing. And those are weights that we put into our lives that steal our joy. Y'all with me tonight? So be careful about the weights. Those watching and those weights, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Who was it that hindered? Who stole your joy? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. You know, when you start bringing these extra weights into the picture, life is hard enough. You don't need added weights to it. Kind of goes along with that first part. Whose standards are you living up to? You know what God says about that? Romans 13, verse number 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer, nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us, therefore, cast off the works of darkness. There are some things we've got to get out of our lives that drain our lives. Do you not understand? There are so many things that can hinder our joy. Those watching, those waits. In case you're writing down some scripture for the sake of time tonight, 2 Corinthians 7, verse number 1, Luke 8, verse 14, Luke 9, verse 57, all the way down to 62. Ephesians 4, verse number 22, through verse number 32, there's some things to get out of your life. Why? It hinders your life. It steals your joy. I realize I'm about ready to get into a journey, Brother John, that I'm going to bring some stuff back into my life that I haven't seen in about two and a half years. You know where it's going to go when it gets here? Storage. And if I have any opportunity between here and there, some might go to the burn pile. Yes. Amen. Because for two and a half years, I haven't had it, I hadn't needed it, and life still is going on. Amen. So much we bring into our lives that sucks the life out of us. Who for the joy. And these things will hinder our joy. Then it brings me to the third thing. You see, the first thing are those that are around us. Then are the things that get put into our lives. And then our actions on which we have. Look at the rest of the verse. The third thing. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You realize that the way we move, the way we move can affect our joy. Your movement, the way we move, it can affect your joy. Philippians 3, verse 6. While you're turning your Bibles over there, I'm going to give you 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Know ye not that the day which, uh, uh, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth in the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Do you not understand the way we move? The reason for it must always be must always be the Lord. Now, I you know today about seven years ago this summer, I landed my balloon and I got to go back. See these y'all balloons that are y'all go to the top of the Amen. Y'all about to preach that? Amen. 
But what a great joy it is, joy unspeakable and full of glory. What an opportunity that we have. I pray if there's one here tonight that doesn't know you, I pray that they'll come to know you before it's everlasting too late. I pray for that believer, Lord, that maybe a family member, maybe a loved one they need to pray for. Whatever that is tonight, bring us to our knees. But thy will be done. Thank you for the joy that you've given to us. Now, Lord, let that be a driving force to rise above and to go forward in the days to come. We pray that you will give us what we need in Christ's name. Amen. All stand, Brother John. What page? Page 280. 280. If you got your phone in your heart, you come. Sing it, Brother John. Sing it, my brother. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. Amen. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me. Come home. Amen. Come home. You are weary. Come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is called. Calling, O oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not? His mercies, mercies for you and for me. Come home, Amen. come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly tend. Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Amen, amen. You know, having a reason and a purpose makes all the difference in the world. It was not a mystery to the Lord. It was not a mystery to the Lord why he did what he did. As a matter of fact, now you know. It's there in the verse. Why did he do it? For the joy. That's why he did it, for the joy. He knew the outcome. A lot of times we go into things and we get discouraged along the way because the results we have wanted and hoped for hasn't happened just yet. And it causes this one to throw in the towel and give up. That's not why we got in there. We got in there for what it could be. And what it's going to be with the Lord. Amen. And ultimately, I just have to keep going forward knowing that God's got it. And ultimately, it's going to be what God wants it to be. For the joy. And when that day happens, Brother Bill, praise the Lord. All things will be in order and just as they ought to be. Amen. But until then, we've got to keep going forward. We can't quit. We can't stop. That's why we keep going forward. Thank God for that. Brother Ed, if you will, dismiss us in prayer, brother.